This video is designed to introduce the divergence theorem, otherwise known as Gauss's law. The main topics to be covered by this video are what is a closed surface, what is the divergence theorem, the meaning of the term divergence, and then some examples using the divergence theorem. A closed surface. S is a closed surface if it bounds a solid region in space. One way to think about this is can it hold air? Examples of closed surfaces would include things like spheres or cubes. Things which are not closed surfaces would be, say, a circular or elliptic paraboloid. Because if we look at the graph of a circular or elliptic paraboloid, just one running along the z-axis, so let's just say z equals x squared plus y squared. Notice the top's open. So it's not bounding a solid region. Now, if your surface was composed of two pieces, one which was the circular paraboloid and the other which was part of the plane, say z equal two, the cap or the circular part of the plane which would comprise the lid to your bowl shape, then that would be a closed surface. But a circular paraboloid by itself or a cone or a circular cylinder are not closed surfaces. The divergence theorem, or Gauss's law, says let E be a solid region and let S be the piecewise smooth boundary surface of E given with positive or outward orientation. Let F be a vector field whose component functions have continuous partial derivatives on an open region that contains E. Then the surface integral of the vector field is equivalent to the triple integral of the divergence of F dV. So, in other words, under certain conditions, the flux of f across the boundary surface of E is equal to the triple integral of the divergence of f over E. Now remember, the divergence of a vector field is a scalar function. So the divergence of f, or del dot f, was just equal to the partial derivative of the first component with respect to x, plus the partial derivative of the second component with respect to y, plus the partial derivative of the third component with respect to z, where your vector field f, we're saying, has components p, q, and r. Therefore, you're taking the triple integral of a scalar function. Now, all of the theorems from this course have in common that they're relating the derivative of a function over a region to the integral of the original function over the boundary. Let's talk about the meaning of divergence. In fluid flow, it measures the tendency of a fluid to diverge from a point. It's a measure of the net rate of outflow or outward flux per unit volume at each point, or another way to think about it is flux density. We call a vector field incompressible if the divergence of the vector field equals zero. So if the divergence of the vector field at a point equals zero, then F is neither a sink or a source, it's incompressible at P. This doesn't mean, for instance, in fluid flow, that no fluid is flowing into the point, but it means the amount flowing in is equivalent to the amount flowing out, as in our third picture down here. So the net rate of outflow would be zero at that point. If the divergence of F at a point is greater than zero, net flow is outward near P, and P is called a source. So the vectors going into the point are smaller than the vectors coming out. If the divergence of f at a point p is less than zero, net flow is inward near p, and p is called a sink. So the vectors going in are bigger than the vectors going out. For this first example, part A asks, are the points p1 and p2 sources or sinks for the vector field f shown in the picture below, and explain. So the divergence of f at point p1, it looks like the vectors going in are smaller than the vectors coming out. So the net rate of outflow is positive, or the divergence of f at p1 is greater than zero, and p1 is a source. The divergence of f at p2, well, it looks like the vectors going in are bigger than the vectors coming out. So the net rate of outflow is less than zero, and p2 is called a sink. Part b says, given the vector field f, which we have the picture of here, it's got components x and y squared, 
use the definition of divergence to verify your answers to part A. So the divergence of the vector field is going to be equal to the partial derivative of the first component with respect to x, so 1, plus the partial derivative of the second component with respect to y, which is 2y. Divergence of f is equal to 0 when 1 plus 2y equals 0 when y equals minus 1 half. Somewhere in here, at y equals negative 1 half, the vectors going into these points are the same length as the vectors coming out. Now, if y is greater than negative 1 half, then divergence of f is greater than 0, and you have sources. So p1 would be a source. And if y is less than negative 1 half, then 1 plus 2y would be less than 0. So the divergence of f is less than 0, and you would have sinks just as we conjectured P2 was a sink.